Hello everyone, welcome back to Hoffman Sketchboard. Today we're going to talk about the oil refinery process. This process starts with crude oil. Inside crude oil, we have all different types of oils that have different molecular geometries. For example, we have gasoline, which usually have a short chain of carbons. This powers the cars that we drive. And then we have jet fuel, which have a slightly longer chain of carbons, and this powers the aircraft that we fly with. And then we have diesel, this usually have a longer chain of carbons, and this type of oil powers the trucks and other heavy duty vehicles. So how do we separate all these different types of fuel from the crude oil? Well, they all have different boiling points, so that we could use a distillation column to separate them out. The mechanics inside a distillation column looks like this. We first heat up the crude oil so that it becomes a mixture of vapor of all different types of oil. Then the oil that has the highest condensed temperature, for example diesel, will condense upon passing through the first set of bubble cups at the first tray and the rest will be too hot to condense so they will pass through. Then the oil that has the next highest condensed temperature, for example jet fuel, will condense as a second tray. Lastly, the oil that has the lowest condensed temperature, gasoline, will condense at the top. However, sometimes the oil will not be condensed as a crack tray. For example, the second tray may contain oil that belongs to the first tray. To prevent this, we have pipes that connect adjacent trays so that this oil that didn't condense as a red tray will be passed to the lower tray for it to stay there, and the oil that were correctly condensed when passed through the lower tray will be boiled and returned to its original tray. After having different types of oil separated, we need a cooling system to cool these different oil for them to storage. For gasoline, it can only be cooled by a one plate exchanger that connects to water. However, for jet fuel and diesel, it is too hot to be just cooled by water. So we will first pass through a plate exchanger to be cooled by thermal oil, and then another plate exchanger to be cooled by water. Since jet fuel and diesel will have a similar cooling system, I will just combine them together to save time. Now we have cooled the different oil properly, but a lot of waste heat were generated especially inside the thermal oil tank. To utilize this waste heat, we can have a system that first uses the heat of the thermal oil to vaporize the bioethanol. And the vaporized bioethanol will have high pressure to push against the piston of a steam engine. Then the engine can generate electricity and discharge. Bioethanol will have low temperature and pressure and can be reheated again by the thermal oil. So this is I have today and thank you for watching, see you next time.